that's all about. So I, yeah, exactly. So if you do everything right, it's gonna work. There's no way. There's no way. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. There's no way. Good day. This is Brad Kaler, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Of course, it is very interesting to know and to see the different activities going on in the world, in Europe, in the United States, or the Americas, as they like to call them. But reality is, why does God use the six-foot rule? Or doesn't he? See, there's so many people right now very upset in the United States that they have to get vaccinated, that they have to wear an N95, that they have to do this and that they have to do that. And nobody seems to understand that God himself set a principle. First, first of all, courtesy. He loves his people. God loves you. He loves me. And for that reason, that means that if God loves us so much that he has given his only begotten son, that means very much. So if you then look at yourself and say, I am upset because I have the right, I want to do this, and I don't like that, then I always like to pull it back a little bit and say, before you get too upset, because that is just your opinion, or maybe it's just the opinion of your group that you, so in a society that you live in, in the group that you spend your time, that group could be political, that group could be in the bank, that group could be spiritual. In other words, you're a church member. And some of those people have very extreme thoughts. And their thoughts come from where? I always ask, what is it that God is telling us? What is it that he's teaching us? And that is where the basic problem is. Because when you look at yourself, are you following a rule or are you following something that your church or the group that you participate in tells you to do? In other words, are you following a rule from a group of people? Or are you following the rule of God? See, God reached out to mankind. And maybe I should bring it back a little bit. Let's go to the beginning of creation. In the beginning, God created. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't believe that. I don't accept that. But for the sake of reasoning, let's assume we all agree. It's called an hypothesis. In other words, we have to begin from a beginning. We have to start so we can have a conversation. And a conversation might not be easy. It doesn't have to be easy. A conversation is something we like to have so that we can hear each other. Are you willing to hear me? For I am willing to hear you. So please respond in your comments and let me know what you think because it is extremely important that we learn to listen to each other. Back to the basics. When God created this world, what did he do? He created Adam and Eve as well. And why did he do that? See, Adam and Eve were two people that a lot of us cannot relate to anymore. Adam and Eve were happy in the presence of God. They were satisfied. They were naked, and yet they had no problems with it. Now, the beach goers might be very upset today because they cannot lay naked on the beach because they have to dress up or partially dress up because the way they're dressing up today, it's hardly any clothes left anyway. But back to the creation. They were happy in the presence of God. And why am I stating this? Because we missed the boat, folks. For me, I am 40 years of age. 
and I've got 31 years of experience of being 40. And for those that are very strong in mathematics, that means I am 71 years of age. And so when I got a call from my daughter that my son uh, was going to be rushed into the hospital and picked up by an ambulance, five o'clock in the morning, that was a shock. My son died in the hospital. They were trying to hook him up on the system and it didn't work too well. They resuscitated him and then they got him induced in coma induced. Problem is that was April the 11th. Today, we're talking the end of August, 2021. That is about 20 weeks later and he's still in coma. Is the progress? Fortunate, there is. But the reality is, he is still in coma. A 38-year young man, strong, never had anything, gets COVID, gets rushed to the hospital, dies, gets resuscitated, and now, 20 weeks later, still in coma. Yesterday, he got for his own wheelchair. He's still in coma but he's aware of things. And through my son, I started to get an understanding what it means, what God what had to do, what God went through. You see, when my son, when I look at him, and every other day or at least four to five times a week, if you have a Zoom meeting with my daughter, well, she visit him in Mount Sinai and in Bridgeport, which is an offshoot of Mount Sinai. And we are talking with him and singing with him and praying with him and just having the ordinary thing as a family. Although we are part of the families in Canada and part of it is in the Netherlands. And we communicate, he recognizes our voices, but his brain his brain is still in a fog. His eyes are open and he's looking, but there is no connection yet. And as I'm going through that with my family, I started to understand God. For the first time in my life, I studied religion. I went to Bible school. I went to seminary. I preached for over 12 years in prison ministry. And I tell you, folks, all over the world have had a chance to preach and share. But there are certain things you only learn when you go through it. This is called a pandemic. It is all over the world. Of course, we can ask why, how, who did this? But let's deal with the issue. The issue is if you get hit with a COVID virus, and you get slain, in other words, you get sick, or you go into the hospital, or you might even die, or like my son ends up in coma for so very long. There are thousands around the world that are going through that, actually several million people. I don't know how many people died. I don't know. So I don't want to guesstimate. But I know one thing, I am dealing with something that is not easy. Not I alone. It is my family, my wife, my daughter. Other family members don't want to hear about it because it is too complicated for them. And because they are scared to face reality, they avoid us. That is another aspect of the COVID virus. The pain and the frustration, the humility that you're going through as a family. And now back to God, as God was in creation and he created a partner, a friend, a person he lost so much that he was willing to give everything. And as he gave everything, what happened? Satan came. Satan was jealous. Why? Satan was the head angel, the top guy. But he was jealous because Adam and Eve were created according to God's image. They were created with a heart. They were created with love. They were created with everything that God was. And they were learning from God how to speak things in existence, how to name the animals, how to live in the paradise. 
And so Satan had to destroy that. And he did. He caused them to separate from God. And that is where I come back to my son in coma. The reason why my son was went into coma, because they could for 10 to 15 minutes, as they were trying to hook him up on the machine to breathe for him, they couldn't get it done. And all the time he was on low oxygen. And that is the reason, the main reason, why he stayed in coma. Back to God the Father. When we were separated because Adam and Eve had chosen for Satan for a moment, just a moment, 10 to 15 seconds, 10 to 15 minutes maybe. They were separated because they oxygen, the oxygen of God became less and less and less. And as God is awesome, God is almighty. As long as we were in his presence, we could do anything. But if we are separated from God, like my son was separated from oxygen for 10 to 15 minutes, he was on very low oxygen, he is in coma. And that is how I understand now that most of us, maybe many of us, are in coma when it comes to the presence of God. Vaguely, we remember. Vaguely, we know. And we don't understand that God reached out. God created first the Ten Commandments for the children of light. They were not, don't you dare to do this because I'm going to kill you. They were created for the children of light. And Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God, the one that you most likely know as Jesus, he was the first who showed us, the followers, the creation of God, how to get back with the Father, how to get back in the full oxygen, the ozone of God. That is what creates us, that gives us strength. The same as my son, his brain is getting used to the oxygen and his brain is now reconnecting again. He's looking, he's staring, He's trying to figure out. That is what happens to us as mankind. Yes, there's a word of God. It's called the Bible. The basic instructions before leaving earth. So we have some basic instructions. And Jesus said, or Yeshua said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, why is that so important? Because when we seek his presence, when we seek his kingdom, we are getting back into the presence of God. And as we follow on the way, the truth and the light, that is where the presence of God is. Not because you sit in a church, not because you shout and yell or shoot other people because they don't believe what you believe. Remember you are created according God's image. Can you imagine God standing there and slap you in the face because you don't wear an, an N95 mask or you don't want an injection and he shoots you because he's mad that you don't do what he says? He gave you a free will. He gave all of us a free will. Now, if you choose to use your free will, and not just follow blindly because your pastor tells you. Your pastor is never supposed to tell you anything. He's supposed to open the books of God, shares with you, and God will guide you. God will teach you. God will direct you through his spirit. Now, if we take that in consideration, now we're going somewhere. Am I being critical? Am I harsh on you? I hope it wakes you up, folks, because as long as I am out of the presence of God, I am short of oxygen. And without that oxygen, my son proves that it affected him. His eyes are moving. I will share videos with you. 
his pictures are he's sitting in a wheelchair. We are happy. There is progress, but he is still in coma. Amazing grace. How do we get out of it? By getting back to the presence of God, getting where we are complete because we are only complete when we are with God in his kingdom. So if you feel that you have the freedom to tell someone you're a black and you don't belong here because you're not white, I think you have to check something out, my friend. If you shoot somebody because he stepped on your toe or he does want to wear a N95, a mask, or he takes in vaccination because he's concerned about his self, his family, and the other people. Remember, when Moses, the great leader of the Jewish people, when he was going to leave the place of Egypt with all the people, they were there for slaves for so long. And now Moses was going to lead them out of Egypt. There was a tremendous plague. God never hit the people because they had a solution for the plague. If they have a vaccination, they would have used the vaccination. God just wanted to make sure that his people, the people that were with Moses, could walk out of Egypt. Now, coming back to the main question, why does God use a six-foot rule. King David, he was the king, the beloved king of the Jewish people. He's done marvelous things. He had slain a bear with his bare hands. He'd slain a giant, Goliath, with his sling, a simple little too, because he was in the presence of God. And as he was in the presence of God, he was able to do the impossible. When he became king, he was the greatest king ever. And then one day he found the ark and he wanted them back to Jerusalem, his place, because God and him, they were buddy buddy. They belonged together. And so David did what he always done. Everything had to go and everybody had to come with him. And as they were dancing and shouting and praising the Lord, what happened? One of the oxes somewhere hit something, and the ark was just about to fall, and somebody pushed it. Somebody tried to hold it back so that the ark would not hit the ground. And as he touched the ark, what happened? He died. He, was, he broke the six-foot rule. God wanted the people to stay away for six feet from the ark. Do not touch the ark. And when the ark was about to fall and somebody tried to help and do the right thing, he died instantaneously. And that shook David up. He was a man according God's heart. It shook him so much that he said, what do I do? And as he studied the system, as he studied the rules of God, he left the ark for three months and in place. And that person got blessed. He didn't touch the ark. Oh, no, he, had, he doesn't want to die. But he made sure that everything was clean around it. Everything was perfect. And God blessed him in everything. Because the presence of God was with him. And finally, David had a solution. And as he has the solution, he's dressed like a priest. And he comes now humble before the ark. He doesn't touch it. But the priests, the proper people, they bring the ark to Jerusalem. And you know what happened? It arrived. And David was so happy. So happy that he danced half naked. Now, his wife, the daughter of Saul, the former king, the first king of Israel, she was so upset with him. How dare he behave like a commoner? He was the king of Jerusalem. He was the king of Israel. 
act like it, behave like a king. Don't behave like a fool, dancing like an idiot. And what happened? The uterus got closed. She didn't and was not able to get children. Because C frowned on the behavior of David. Well, God was pleased with the fact that David, although he was a sinner, although he made many mistakes, he loved God with all his heart. And he was in the presence of God. See, that is what will restore us. Is there a six-foot rule? Yes. We have to have respect for God. We have to have respect for his creation. And if there is a six-foot rule to stand back so that others have room, and if we cough, we don't just spray it all over the people, but we behave like we want to be in the presence of God with respect, we treat each other. Is there a rule? Yes, my friends. Is it handy to stick to that rule today in 20, 2021? Yes. You know why? Because we respect God. We respect his creation. But if you don't care and you want to follow Mr. Trump because he wants his goal, he wants to have his situation, although he is sued for just about anything under the sun, then... We have to choose. Are we following God and love God enough to obey? Or are we stupid enough to walk away, follow the spirit of Mr. Trump? Me, 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 and myself, a narcissistic approach that seems to be prevalent today. Or are we repenting? And repenting means very simple. Recognize that what we've done is wrong. Stop for a moment. Take a breather. Ask for forgiveness. Repent. And then seek the presence of God. And God will give you wisdom. Because it is through his spirit that he will guide you and will direct you. So that you will become successful in all that you undertake. That is how we will get delivery for our son as well. We are seeking his presence. Be working with the doctors. I got my vaccination because in order to travel, to be with my kids, we need to full, uh, fulfill certain things. And we've done that. We can humble ourselves and seek the presence of God. And in that, we will become successful in every aspect. And I hope that you will too. God bless you. This is Brad Caleb, PhD. My PhD stands for Post Hall Dicker. God bless you. Bye for now.